Hello everyone and welcome to our new section which is called LinkedIn List. With this lecture, we begin a brand new section in which you will learn everything about LinkedIn List. In this section, you will get a deep knowledge about LinkedIn List which includes different types of LinkedIn List, LinkedIn List in the memory and performing various operations on different types of LinkedIn List. In the first lecture, let's see what's a LinkedIn List. So let's get started. By definition, linked list is a form of sequential collection, and it does not have to be in order. A linked list is made of independent nodes that may contain any type of data, and each node has a reference to the next node in the link. I know that you might not understand this definition from beginning, so to make things more understandable, let's take a real-life example. In real life, linked list data structure resembles a train. Because, as in the linked list, the train is composed of nodes, which are cars, and where there is a link between these nodes. As you see from the pictures, these are cars, which is called nodes in the linked list, and these are links between these cars over here. In the linked list, we have links between nodes as well. Another feature of trains that confirms with linked list is that both of them have head and tail. In this case, train engine is head, and the last car in the train is tail. And we know that all these cars that have in train are independent. It means that if in case we don't need this compartment over here, we can remove it, but the train still work. Even we can add new compartment over here by linking these compartments over here. So this means that each compartment in the train is independent. Another feature is that we can enter any of these cars in a sequential manner, which means that while train is going, we cannot jump from this compartment over here to the, to the compartment over here. We have to go through this compartment and reach the last compartment over here. This is same in the linked list. If you want to reach the last node in the linked list, we have to traverse through all nodes to reach the last node. As mentioned in the definition of linked list, each element consists of two parts which are data and linked to the next node. And here in the train, we can easily see that in each car there are passengers and each car is linked to the next car with link. So it can be easily seen that train satisfies all properties of linked list. So we can say that the train is linked list. Now with this example we understand the analogy of linked list. Of course there are some properties of trains which do not conform with linked list. For instance the train compartments over here are contiguous which means that they are next to each other. But the linked list in memory is not contiguous. The nodes of linked list are not contiguous. In the world of computer science, the linked list looks like this. It can be easily seen that this structure resembles the structure of train over here. As in the train, we have head over here and tail over here. In case of train, the engine is head, but in case of linked list, we have reference here to the first node, which is called head. And we have cars in the train which carry passengers, and in the linked list, we have node which has values in it. These are the values of nodes. And we have links between these nodes which joins them together. Finally, the last node of linked list is called tail because the pointer here is null and there is no link to other nodes from this node over here. So if we summarize the components of the linked list, we can get the following. As we can see from this diagram over here, the, the first component of linked list is head, which has a reference to the first node in the list and there is no reference to this component over here. So there might be a question, why do we need head? So the answer is, if we don't know where the linked list starts, then how do we access the linked list element? So this is a must for locating a linked list in the memory. Then we have nodes over here, which are the elements of linked list. Node consists of two parts. The first part is value of node, and the second part is reference to the next node which creates a link between current node and next node. Okay, we understand that this reference joins the this current node to the next node. So what is the reference exactly? We know that when we allocate an element in the memory, it has a physical location in the RAM. Basically, the physical location to the next node is stored in the current node for referencing it. As you see, for example, this node's physical location is 1, 1. So this location is stored in the first node. So to have a reference to it. In this case, the location of this node over here, node 4, is 222. So 222 is stored in this node over here, which has reference to this node. So 
node 2 has reference to node 4 by using node 4's physical location which is 2 2 2 so when we visit for example this node over here we exactly know that where is the second node in the memory because in the first node we have the location of second node so the last component in the linked list is tail which is a reference to the last node here basically we store the physical location of last node so again here you might be interested why do we store this reference to last node why do we need a tail so if you want to insert an element at the end of linked list without tail we need to traverse through all these elements over here and come to the last node and insert an element over here and this is very time consuming operation it will take o n time complexity but by knowing the last element's address we can increase the efficiency of inserting an element at the end of linked list but this is not mandatory okay that's all for this video here we have learned analogy of linked list even though the trim example does not reflect all properties of linked list it's a very good example to get basics of linked list now in the next video let's talk about what are the main differences between arrays and linked list the reason that we are comparing these two data structures is that both of them can do same operations on the data set so we need to identify differences and choose which one is efficient for our purposes see you in the next lecture hi there in the last video we used the train example to understand what's a linked list even though not all properties of train confirm with a linked list it's a good example to understand the concept of linked list now in this lecture we will look at differences between linked list and array in one of previous sections we have discussed arrays and here we start to discuss different data structure which is linked list the point is arrays technically allow you do all of the things linked list do such as addition insertion and removal and these methods are already available to us in many programming language so you might be interested why would we use a linked list instead of array to answer this question we will look at differences between these two data structures let's have a linked list and an array side by side to see how they are different in their properties the first and the most important difference between a linked list and an array is that each of elements of linked list is an independent object if we don't need any of these nodes over here we can delete it and still the linked list will exist but in case of array the cells are not separate objects so we cannot delete the cell of course we can delete the value of this cell over here but the cells still will exist in the memory so we are just deleting the value of cells from the array we are not deleting the cell itself when we delete this value over here these values will be moved to this cell and the cell at the end will be empty but the cell still exists in the memory and occupy a space the second difference is variable size this means that in the case of linked list we don't define the size when we create it we always decrease and increase number of nodes over here we can delete a node we can insert a node we don't need to specify the size of linked list up front the size of linked list is not predefined we can delete any node from here and add extra node there is no space restriction over here but in case of array we need to declare the size of array in the memory which means that we cannot insert a new element to the same array if the capacity is full well the biggest difference comes in insertion and removal since the array are indexed when you perform an insertion or removal in the middle of array you have to reset the position of following values to their new indexes imagine inserting in the start of or middle of an array 100,000 values long insertion and removals like this are extremely expensive because when we insert an element in the middle of an array all elements have to move one step right and this is very time consuming but in case of a linked list when we insert an element in the middle or beginning of the linked list we just need to change the link between them we are not changing the place of elements in the memory so this is very efficient in case of linked list on the other hand arrays are great when it comes finding items since they are indexed if you know the position of an item you can access it directly which will take all one time complexity but in case of linked list it always require you to iterate over the linked list sequentially which means that if you want to access an element over here we have to start from the first element and iterate sequentially and find this element over here which is very time consuming so the final difference is random access it means that if you want to access cell number two in the array all we need to do is write the array name and its index so in this case the index of two is three so if you want to access 
this cell over here we just need to write array name and index of three it will directly access to this cell but in case of linked list we cannot do that if you want to access node number four for example over here we cannot access it directly we need to always start from first node and come over here this is one of the limitation of linked list in terms of accessing the nodes so this is all for this lecture here we have learned main differences between a linked list and array and hopefully everything is clear for you now in the next video let's talk different types of linked list hi there in the previous video we talked about main differences between a linked list and an array now in this video we will talk about different types of linked list basically there are four types of linked list that can be created the first type is singular linked list then circular singular linked list then double linked list and then circular double linked list okay let's explain all these types one by one and see how they are different from each other first we will start with a single linked list in a single linked list each node in the list stores the value and the reference to the next node in the list it does not have any reference to the previous node it can be easily seen from this graph that each node has two parts over here the first part is value which is in our case one two four five these are the values of nodes and the second half is reference to the next node we know that the reference is the physical address of the next node in the memory so in the first node you can see that it is the physical address of second node over here the second node's physical address is 111 and it is stored in the first node over here and in the second node we have third node's physical address which is 222 so as you see we have stored it over here so this is this type of linked list is the simplest form of linked list in which each node stores data and refers to the next node as mentioned in previous video it gives us flexibility of adding and removing nodes at runtime okay let's continue with the second type of linked list which is a circular singular linked list circular singular linked list is the same as singular linked list the only difference is the last node of this list stores the reference to the first node in case of single linked list the last node reference is always null but here we have a reference to the first node as you see in case of single list over here the reference of last node is null you can see from this graph easily but in case of circular single linked list the reference of last node points to the first node the physical location of first node in this case is 001 and we store this reference in the last node of this circular single linked list so in our case the physical location of first node is 001 so it's stored in the last node of linked list basically what's happening here is that when we reach the last node of linked list we have an option of going back to the first node which is not possible in case of single linked list as you see we have an option from here to go back to the first node but in case of single linked list we don't have such option over here from last node to first node that's the only difference between single linked list and circular linked list and it can be seen that the name circular comes from the fact that the last node always points to the first node basically it creates a circle so you might be interested why do we need this okay let's imagine that we have a four player chess game and each player plays it turns one by one but when we reach the last player we need to go back to the first player for example if this player starts to play and then this player then this player and then this player the turn comes to this player but by implementing a single linked list we cannot do this because we don't have reference to the first node from last node and here the reference is null so we face a problem because our game is stuck on the other hand by implementing a circular linked list we can solve this problem so let's see how a circular linked list solve this problem we have learned that in a circular linked list we have a reference from last node to the first node if we implement a circular linked list to our game over here we have four players which means that we will have four nodes as you see that each player created as one node over here so once player one plays his turn the turn goes to the player two and after player three and player four and once player four is done the controller goes back to the player one 
as you see, we have a reference from here to the player one. And this circular traversal continues until a winner is declared. This was one example to show you in which case we might need a circular linked list. And I hope that the idea is clear now. Let's continue the third type of linked list, which is double linked list. This type of linked list also resembles a single linked list. But the difference is here we have two references from each node. A reference to previous node and a reference to the next node. As you see, each node has two references. The first reference is the reference to the previous node. The second reference is reference to the second node. So in case of node 2, for example, if we take node 2 over here, we see that it stores the physical location of node 1 and it stores the physical location of node 3. Which means that from this node, we have access to the next node and we have an access to the previous node. As you see, we have references in both directions over here. So the question is, why do we need it? Let's say we are at node 3, here, over here. In the case of a single linked list, we can only traverse to the next node. We cannot go back because we don't have physical location of previous node. But in case of double linked list, we have an option of traverse back as we have a reference to the previous node. Due to the fact that we know the physical location of both previous and next node. Thus, a double linked list provides us flexibility of reversing in both directions. Let's look at a real life example where we might need a double linked list. So we have learned that in this type of linked list, based on our requirement, we can go back and forward. This means that from a given node, we can move in both directions, forward and backward. Let's say we want to implement a music application in which we can move next song and previous song. It's obvious that by clicking the next button over here, we can reach the next song and by clicking the previous button over here, we can reach the previous song in the playlist. By using single linked list, we can implement the next button as we have a reference to the next elements. But when it comes to the previous button, we cannot use single linked list. So in this case, double linked list comes to our help. So implementing of double linked list can be like this. Let's imagine that we have four songs in our list. Our double linked list will be like this. This is the node one is song one, the node two is song two, and the note 3 is song 3 and the note 4 is song 4. So here we can access from song 1 to song 2 and from song 2 to song 1. And from song 3 we can come back to the song 2 and from here we can go back to the song 1. This is the logic behind our implementation. As you see how double linked list fits very well in this situation. So by using double linked list in a music application we can traverse backward and forward very easily through the songs. Hopefully, this example makes it clear to understand why we need a double linked list. Finally, let's see the last type of linked list, which is a circular double linked list. Here again, it's obvious that we have similarities between double linked list and circular double linked list. The only difference between these two types of linked list is their first and last node. As you guess from the circular linked list, that in the last node we have reference to the first node. As you see from this graph, that the next reference of last node in circular double linked list is the first node. So the physical location of first node is 001, which is stored in the next reference of last node, which means that it has an access to the first node. And similarly, the previous reference of first node is the last node's location. As you see, the last node's location is 333 and it's stored in the previous reference of first node. This gives us flexibility of traversing from the first node to the last node and from last node to the first node. This way it creates circular traversing and this is why it's called circular double linked list. Let's look at how a circular double linked list works in real life. We need this type of linked list when we look through the list infinitely. While the list exists, we can move forward and backward. Here we will look at CMD shift top functionality of Mac. Mac users know that when we click this combination, we see all open applications and we can traverse through them and select the one that we want to use. Right now, there are six applications open, which are Maps, Finder, Photos, iBooks, Calendar and Safari Browser. So when a user clicks CMD Shift Tab, the Mac opens the list and starts to traverse through it as I press Tab continuously. So when it reaches the end of this list, it starts from beginning again until we select any application from here. So if you want to implement such functionality in our application, using double linked list will not be enough. 
because once we reach the end of this list, we cannot come back to the first element due to the lack of connection between the first node and the last node over here. Now this is where circular double linked list is needed. If we implement a circular double linked list where the node express each application, we see that the last node knows the physical location of first node. We can go round and round in a circle. As you see that the problem of looping indefinitely can be very easily solved by a circular double linked list. Without using circular double linked list, this functionality will be very difficult to implement. So this is all for this lecture. Hopefully everything is clear now for all four types of linked list that we have learned over here. Now let's continue to our next video in which we will talk about how linked lists are stored in computer memory. Hi there, in this video we are going to learn how linked lists are stored in memory. In the array sections, we have learned that elements of array are stored in memory contiguously, which means that they are next to each other in the memory. As you see from the picture, this is our sample array and the elements of array are located in the memory contiguously, which means that they are next to each other. Here we know the exact location of cells, so to access them becomes easier. Here I'm not going into details of arrays in memory because I have already explained it in detail in our array section. I just remind you how they are located in memory for comparing them with linked lists easily. Okay, let's see how the linked list is represented in memory. So here we have a linked list having four nodes in it. The first node is one, which is pointed by head. And the second node is two, which is pointed by one. And the third node is four, which is pointed by two. And the fourth node is five, which is pointed by node three, which is four. The last node is always pointed by tail. It can be easily seen that the elements of linked lists are not located contiguously in memory. Here, our location is randomly. As we create a new node for a linked list, it will be created randomly in memory and linked to available nodes. As you can see, if we take, for example, the second node over here, the cells next to this node are empty. This means that the nodes are not located contiguously. In linked list, each node needs an extra memory space for a pointer is required to link nodes. So the random allocation of elements allows us to add as many nodes as required because the size of linked list does not need to be specified at the time of its declaration. It allows us dynamic resizing at runtime. And because of random location, we cannot access any given element in the linked list directly due to the fact that we don't know the location of element, so we have to traverse from the first element to find the required element, which is one of the weak points of linked list. For example, if you want to access node 3 over here, which is 4, so we have to traverse from node 1, then go to node 2, then go to node 3. By this way, we can access node 3. But in case of array, we always know the location of elements with its index. For example, if we find the fifth element, we know that the index of that element is 4, as the first index in array starts from 0. But here in the linked list, even if we know the location of first node, we cannot find the location of fifth node by adding values to the current location of the node. Because the fifth node can be anywhere in the memory over here. So by knowing the location of 1, we, we cannot add a value to the index of this node and find the next node in the memory. Because the next node can be anywhere in the memory. So with this video, I have explained how linked lists are located in memory. Hopefully you understand everything very really clearly. And I hope by this time you have a solid understanding about fundamentals of linked list. Now in the next video, let's see creation of single linked list in memory. And we will look at how can we create single linked list in Python. Alright, till this lecture we have learned fundamentals of linked list. And from now on, we will look at operations that we can perform on linked list, which includes creation, insertion, traversal, searching and deletion. In this lecture, we will start to perform these operations on single linked list, then continue to other three types of linked list. So let's look at how can we create a single linked list. There are a few steps to create a single linked list. First, we create a blank head reference, and then we create a blank tail reference and initialize both of them with null. So we know from previous lectures that the head always points to the first node and the tail points to the last node. 
right now we don't have any nodes to be pointed that's why we set them to null indicating that there are no nodes in the list so as you see here the reference of head is null and the reference of tail is null so the next step is to create a blank node here initialize the reference part of node with null indicating that there is no other node in the list and finally we initialize the data part of list with a value let's say the value is one so as we created this node it stores in the memory and imagine that the physical location of this node is 111 and the reference of this node is null because it's indicating that there is no other node in this list so the next step that we are going to do to link this node over here with head and tail we point the head reference to this node by updating head reference to this node's physical location and this creates a link between head and the first node as we have only one node in our list this node is the first and the last node of the list so the tail also reference to this node this means that the reference part of the tail will be updated with the physical location of the node which is 111 so as you can see that there are three steps to create a single linked list the step one is to create head and tail with null references and the step two is to create node with reference null and initialize data to it and the step three is link head and tail to this node okay let's switch to python and see how this is working in practice as we mentioned the first step is to create head and tail and assign null reference to it for this i will create a clause called single linked list in which we initialize head and tail so here i will create one class class single linked list list in which we initialize head and tail value so i will use initialization function need to take parameter as a self so here i'll put self head equals now which is now value in the python and tail equal now so as a first step we created head and tail values and assign null reference to them now the second step is we need to initialize the node with reference and value here again I need another class for nodes in which we will initialize two properties of node so this will be class node so inside init function the value will be by default none which is null so we are initializing the value of node with null then self value will be the value that comes from the parameter and self next will be null so in this class we are creating a node with null value and the reference also is null so the third step we need to assign a value to the node and create link between the node and head tail so to do so i need to create brand new linked list over here and assign the value and reference of this linked list nodes so for simplicity i will create a linked list which has two nodes so here the list will be created based on linked list based on this class over here i will take this class as put it here so we are creating a single linked list using this class then using node class over here i will create two nodes node one will be node the value will be one and for node two's value will be two so the next thing that i need to do here i just need to link these nodes together so first so first i need to assign first node to the head value of this linked list so here single linked list dot head will be node one then the next value of node one has to be node two so here if i connect to single link at this head and next we know that the head value is node one so to access the node one's next reference we can use something like this head and dot next so here i will assign node two and finally as a tail i will assign the last node which is node two so with this piece of code we have created 
a single linked list which has two nodes and we have referenced the first node to the head and the second node to the tail. Now we cannot print out this single linked list over here because this is not built-in data structure. This is custom data structure. So to be able to print out this, we need to create another helper function over here. So in this lecture, I'm not going to create it because we will do it in our upcoming lectures. Now you might be interested, what is the time and space complexity of creation of single linked list? So here we will look at each operation separately and combine them together. The process of creating head and tail is a constant time operation. So over here, the process of creating head is all one time complexity and the process of creating tail is all one time complexity. So also the creation of node over here in this class, assigning a value and next node is all one time complexity. And finally, it's obvious that creating links between head and nodes and nodes and tail is also constant time operation. Here again, we have all one time complexity for these operations over here. So if we add all these operations, we get all one time complexity. So the time complexity for creating a single linked list is O1. So when it comes to the space complexity, it is also O1 because all we are doing here is just creating head and tail pointers and creating a blank node. If we create more than one node, then the space complexity will be ON because it depends on number of elements of the single linked list. So this is all for this lecture. Hopefully everything is clear. Now in the next lecture, let's look at how can we insert an element to the single linked list over here. See you over there. Hi there. In the previous lecture, we have learned how to create a single linked list. In this lecture, we will learn how to insert a node to the single linked list and how it reflects in the memory. There are three ways to insert new node in an existing single linked list. We can insert a node at the beginning of linked list. We can insert a node after a node in the middle of single linked list and we can insert a node at the end of single linked list. First, let's look at adding a node at the beginning of single linked list. Let's say we have a sample linked list which is allocated in the memory like this. We want to insert an element of zero at the beginning of single linked list. The first thing that we are going to do is allocating a random memory in the heap for new node. Then the address of first node of linked list, which is one in our case over here, is assigned as the next pointer of newly created node. So the next pointer of zero over here will be first node of this linked list. Then we assign the address of this newly created node over here to the head. And the connection between head and with this first node over here will be broken. So the reference of head will be newly created node, node now. So that's it for the insertion of a new element to the beginning of linked list. Let's continue to the next scenario. In this scenario, we want to insert an element in the middle of linked list. As before, we have a linked list in memory like this, and we want to add a new node of three to this linked list after two over here. As the data in the linked list is not stored in contiguous format, we need to traverse from head to find the given node over here. So to insert this element over here, we need to start from the head and come here and then insert this element over here. Then after reaching this node over here, we need to allocate a random location for this new node and make the next node of the current node as a new node. So the next node of this node over here, which is two, will be newly created node. And the next node of newly created node will be the next node over here. So in our case, it's four. And with this, the insertion of element in the middle of linked list is completed. So we are just creating the link between these nodes over here. Now let's continue to the next scenario in which we will add a new node at the end of linked list. Here again, we have a sample linked list, which is allocated in the memory like this. So to add an element at the end of linked list, we need to traverse from first element till the end of this element. So when we reach the last element, so we allocate a location in the memory for this element, then we are updating the next reference of last node to this node. And then, and the tail reference is updated to this node over here. With this, we are adding new node at the end of linked list. So in this video, we have explored what happens in the memory when we add a new node to the linked list in three different scenarios. 
it's obvious that the most efficient way of adding a new element to the linked list is adding an element at the beginning of node because here relinking is not required and we are not traversing through linked list but adding an element at the end of linked list is time consuming because we have to traverse through all elements of linked list and then update the reference of last element over here so this is all for this lecture here we have learned what happens in memory when we add new node to the existing linked list now in the next lecture let's look at the algorithm of insertion in single linked list see you over there all right in the previous video we have explained how to insert a new node into a linked list we have learned that there are three ways of inserting a node to a linked list which are inserting a node in the beginning of linked list inserting a node at the end of linked list and finally inserting a node after a particular node so in this video we will combine all these three types of insertion in one algorithm to make it easier for us when we create it using any programming language here in this picture you see our algorithm for insertion in linked list so the algorithm starts from over here we start creating a method which takes two parameters over here the first parameter is node value and the second parameter is location node value is the value of node that we want to insert into this single linked list and the location is where we want to insert this newly created node in our single linked list so the first step in our method we are creating a new node and assigning a value to this node and this value comes from the parameter from the methods parameter over here then we are continuing to the next step in the next step we are checking that if head is equal to none or not this means that if head is null this means that we don't have any node in our single linked list so we are adding our first node to this single linked list by referencing head and tail to this node but if our head is not null then we are continuing to the step over here in which we will check location parameter this location parameter comes from here so if we are inserting a node at the beginning of linked list we will continue over here in which we are updating the next reference of newly created node to head and head to node what does it mean we know that the next reference of the node that we created is empty now so we assign the value of head to it which is a physical location of node 1 in our single linked list by doing this we create a link between a new node that we created and the first node because we know that the value in the head is reference to the first node so then we have to create a reference between a head and newly created node so assigning the location of newly created node to head we are creating a link between head and newly created node and the previously created link between head and node 1 gets deleted by doing this we successfully insert newly created node at the beginning of single linked list let's see how this is working in real example Here we have a sample single linked list like this and we want to insert this node over here at the beginning of this list over here. So I took the part from the algorithm which is implementing this process. So here, so here the first thing that we are doing is we are setting the this node's next reference to head. So now this node's next reference is empty. So by setting this next reference to head, we are updating the next reference of this node over here to 001. And this is creating a link between this node over here and the first node over here. Because 001 is the physical location of first node over here. Then we are setting head to this node, which means that we are taking the physical location of this node over here and updating to head. And this is creating a link between this newly created node over here and head. And by creating this link over here, we are deleting the link between head and first node over here. Now the first node becomes this newly created node over here. So this part of algorithm is responsible for adding a new node at the beginning of single linked list. Now let's continue to the next step in our algorithm. Here the next step is, once again we are checking the location parameter. Here we check that if the location parameter is not equal to first, then we continue to the next step. Here we are checking if the location parameter is equal to last, then this part of algorithm will be processed. Here we are inserting a node at the end of linked list. We know that we have created a node over here and assigned the value to it. And the reference of this node is now. To insert newly created node at the end of linked list, we need to set its next reference to null because we know that in single linked list the last node's next reference is null 
So the first step that we are doing over here, we are setting the next reference of this newly created node to null. The next thing that we are going to do, we need to update last node's next reference to this node. So we are setting over here the last node's next reference to node. Then we need to create a connection between tail and node. So here we are setting tail reference to node. And with this, this newly created node is added at the end of linked list. Now let's see how this part of algorithm works in real life example. Here, one more time, we have single linked links like this. We have a newly created node here. So we want to add this newly created node at the end of this single linked list over here. So as we said, the first thing that we are going to do, we will set the next reference of this node over here to now. Then the next step is we need to set last node's next reference to this node. So we need to update last node's next reference to this node's physical location. And this will create a link between last node and this newly created node. Then we need to create a reference between tail and this newly created node. So we need to update tail with this newly created node. So this will create a link between tail and newly created node. And by creating link between this node and tail, we are deleting the link between tail and the last node that we had before. And this is how it works, this part of algorithm in the real life example. Now let's continue to the next step in our algorithm. The next step is if the location is not equal to last, then we continue over here, which means that we need to add a new located node in the middle of single linked list. So here we need to find in which location we are going to insert a new located node. To find it, we need to loop through all elements of single linked list. Then after finding the current node, we will set the current node reference to this new located node and this new located node's reference to the next node in the link at this. So let's see how this is working in real life example. So here again, we have sample single link at least like this. So we want to insert this newly created node after this node over here. So the first step in our algorithm, we, want, we need to find a location. So we will start loop from the first node until we find the location that we want to insert. So in this case, as we said, we want to insert a new node after this node over here. So our current node is four. So the next step in our algorithm, we need to send current nodes next node to this node. So we will update current nodes reference over here to 444, which is physical location of new created node over here. So by updating this physical location to here, we are creating a connection between this node and this node over here. So we are creating a connection between node six and node four over here. Then the next step in our algorithm is we need to set the next reference of this node over here to the next node. So our next node is five over here and the physical location of this node is three, three. So we need to update this three, three, three to this node's reference. So by updating it, we are creating a connection between these two nodes. And when we create a connection between these two nodes, previously created connection over here is automatically get deleted. So by this, we are inserting an element in the middle of single linked list. Okay, now we have an idea of how the insertion algorithm works in three different situations. Now in the next lecture, let's use this algorithm to create a method for inserting a node to the given linked list in Python and see what is the time and space complexity for this insertion in single linked list. See over there. Hi there. In the last video, we have looked at the algorithm of insertion in single linked list. Now in this video, we will implement that algorithm using Python programming language. So in the lecture of creation of single linked list, we have created node class and we have created single linked list over here. Here just, I added an extra function over here to make our single linked list printable. So we can use this expression over here. We can print out our single linked list. So we will need this after creating our insertion method over here. So here I will create a new method for insertion. We will create this method by using the algorithm that we have looked in previous lecture. So if you haven't watched the previous lecture, I advise you to go back and watch it because without knowing this algorithm, it's difficult to write this code over here. So according to our algorithm, we will create a method which will take two parameters. So here inside this single linked list class, I'll create a method called insert to single linked list. So here I will create method insert single linked list. And here as a parameter, it will take itself as a parameter, then value and location. 
So the first step in our algorithm is to create new node. So we will create a new node based node class over here. So our new node will be like this. We will use node class. So this, we are creating an empty node over here. Then we are initializing a value to this node. So to initialize a value to this node, we just take the parameter from here and we will put inside this node class. So by using this, we are creating a new node and initializing a value to it. This is the first step in our algorithm. Then the next step is we are checking if head value is null or not. If head value is null, it means that we don't have any node in our single linked list. So we are creating our first node by creating reference to head and tail. So here we will put if condition if self dot head is null. Then as I said, this means that we don't have any node in our list. So we will reference our head to this node and tail to this node. So it will be like this head equals to new node and our tail also will be referenced to this node over here. So by doing this, we are adding the first node in our single linked list. So this single linked list over here will consist of only one node. So the next step in our algorithm is we are checking the location parameter from here. So in this case, if the location is zero, it means that we want to insert an element at the beginning of single linked list. So here I will put like this else inside else statement. I will put another if condition, which will check our location parameter. So if it is equal to zero, it means that we are inserting an element at the beginning of single linked list. So how we are inserting an element at the beginning of single linked list. So we know from our algorithm that here, first we are setting the next reference of this newly created node over here to the head, then head reference to this new node. So here I will do like this new node dot next equals self head. So you might be interested that why we are putting new nodes next to the self head because so here head stores first nodes physical location. So we are setting the new nodes next reference to first nodes physical location. Then we are updating head with new nodes physical location. So we will put like this hell head equals new node. So with these two line of code, we are adding, we are adding new node at the beginning of single linked list. Then the next step is to add an element at the end of single linked list. In this case, we are checking location parameter again, else if location equals one. In this case, it means that we are inserting an element at the end of single linked list. So to insert a node at the end of single linked list, first we need to set new nodes next reference to now because we know that the last element's next reference is null in case of single linked list. So here we are setting it now. Then the next step is we need to set last node to reference to this node. So last node's next reference will be physical location of new node. So in this case, to access last node, we, we will use tail. So we know that tail stores the physical location of last node. So if we access the next value of tail, it means that we are accessing the next reference of last node. So I will set it to new node. So by doing this, we are creating link between last node and new node. Then at the end, we have to create a reference between tail and new node. So in this case, it will be self tail equals new node. So with these three lines of code, we are adding new node at the end of single linked list. Then the last case in our algorithm is to add an element in the middle of single linked list. In this case, I'll put else over here. Then in this case, we need to traverse through single linked list and find the location that we are going to insert our element and do certain updates to reference values. Here, first I will create a temp node, which will take the value of head because we need to start from head to traverse. So I'll create another value variable, which is index which will help us for living. Then inside while loop, while index less than location minus one, then we will assign temp node dot next, which means that it will traverse through single linked list and every time it will take the value of next node in the list. So it will traverse till index reach the location minus one. 
so here in each step i will add one to index one so we are traversing one element in each step by doing this we are finding the current element that's why we put location minus one over here we need to identify next element in the list to insert this node between current and next node so to identify next node in the list i'll create a node over here next node we know that if the temp node is the current node then the next node will be temp nodes next value then to insert a node between this node we need to set current nodes next reference to new node so we know that current node is temp node so temp nodes next reference will be new node and then new nodes next reference will be next node next node so by doing this we are inserting this new node between temp node and next node which is temp node is our current node and the next node is the next node as it seems from its name so with this we are completing our insertion function first we created a new node then we checked that if there is any node or not if there is not any node we are inserting it straight away and and creating reference from head to this node and from tail to this node then we have three cases we are inserting an element at the beginning of single linked list then at the end of single linked list then in the middle of single linked list so by using this uh, insert method we can insert an element in single linked list in three different ways so let's check our function that if it is working properly so we know that before we created a single link of this like this in this case we don't have any element in this single link of this so let's try to add first element over here so to call this function over here we know that it's it's located inside this class so we create a reference to this class so by writing the single link of this dot then we can call this method over here so i'll put for example first value is one then as a location we know that we don't have anything over here we can put anything we want i'll put one so let's run our code we see that this node which has the value of one is inserted in our single link at this so if i add for example another one here i'm putting one which will add it at the end of this single link at this so let me change the value over here let's add few three and four then let's run our code you see that here we receive an error so i reviewed our code i saw that we did a mistake over here inside in this elf condition we need to put none over here i just mistakenly mistyped it so it should be none not none so if i save it and run our code you see that it inserted one two three four nodes over here so every time it, it inserted at the end of this node over here let's try for example our first case to insert an element at the beginning of single linked list so i'll copy this from here and put it separately and here for example i want to insert zero at the beginning of this single linked list the value is zero and the location is zero which means that it should insert at the beginning of single linked list so here if i run our code you see that zero is inserted at the beginning of single linked list so here we tested one if we put one it's adding at the end of single linked list then the third case is we need to add in the middle so for example if i run our code for different case if i put for example three over here and run our code you see that zero is inserted after the third element so this is first element this is second this is third so after third element we are inserting zero over here if i put for example four here it will be inserted after three you see that our method is working perfect so this is how we are implementing insert method in single linked list so you might be interested what is time and space complexity for this method over here so let's start from the beginning so here we are creating new node which is constant time operation then we are continuing to check in if condition head value which is all one time complexity also these assignments over here also all one time complexity then this if condition and these assignments over here all of them are constant time operation and if we continue to the next if inside next if we see that we have if condition and assignments over here we are just updating the values which are constant time operation in the 
else statement we see that we are looping through single linked list and we know that looping operation takes o n time complexity so this part over here in else condition is o n time complexity and this assignments over here is o long time complexity so if we combine everything here we know that non-dominant terms will be eliminated so in our case o one time complexities are non-dominant terms so the time complexity for inserting an element to the single linked list is o n now you might be interested what is space complexity. The space complexity is O1 because here we are just creating two nodes. The first node is new node over here and the second node is temporary node over here. So that's why the space complexity is O1. So this is all for this lecture. In this lecture we have developed a method which can be used to insert an element in single linked list in three different ways. So see you in the next lecture. Hi there and I hope you are enjoying the course. Now in this video we will look at how can we traverse a given single linked list. So what does it mean? It means that we are visiting each node one by one till the end of single linked list. Let's imagine that we have a single linked list like this and if we want to traverse through this linked list the idea is very simple. We start from the first node which is node 1 then keep visiting all nodes until we reach the last node. Every time we visit any node we print the value of node over here. In our case, for example, when we visit the first node over here, we are printing the value of 1. Then in the next node, we are printing the value of 2. Then we are visiting the third node in which the value is 4. And then we are visiting the last node in which value is 5. In every visit, we are printing the value of nodes over here. When we reach the last node over here, we terminate the loop. Okay, let's see how the algorithm of traversal operation looks like. So here we start by checking the head element. If head is exist, it means that linked list exists. If it does not exist, we terminate because without head, we cannot have any single linked list. So if it exists, then we continue to the next step in which we are visiting all elements of single linked list one by one and printing their value. And when we reach the last node, we are terminating our algorithm over here. So now let's switch to Python and see how can we write traversal function for single linked list. Now here I'm going to use same class that we created in our previous lectures in which we created single linked list and write a method to insert a node into single linked list. So here I will create a new function which will help us to traverse through single linked list. So here under this comment I will create a new function which is called traverse single linked list and here it takes parameter self because this is located inside this class then as we said in our algorithm the first step here we need to check head if head exists or not so if self dot head is none it means that we don't have single linked list so here i will print out saying that the single linked list single linked linked list does not exist otherwise we will continue to traverse through elements to start from head value i will create a temporary value over here which will take the value of head because i want to start from the first node so we know that so we know that head stores the physical location of first node so here inside while loop while this node over here is not now then we will continue to print out the value of nodes print node dot value so in every step we have to traverse to the next element to go to the next element we will write something like this node dot next value so in each step we are assigning node value to the next node so this is how traversal work so let's just use this traversal function to see how it's working for the single linked list that we created before so if we go down i just kept the information that we have before here we were printing out the single linked list so after printing out i'll call our traversal function to see that if it is working correctly so let's run our code. 
you see that this is our single linked list over here so our traversal works fine because because it visit first the first element which is zero then one two three four then zero and four as you see that the elements are here and this traversal function visit them one by one and when it reaches the last element it stops there so this is how traversal works in single linked list now let's see what is the time and space complexity for this method over here let's start from the beginning we know that the if condition which is taking head value takes O one time complexity and print statement over here also takes O one time complexity so the first part of this if condition is O one time complexity now let's continue to the next part in else part we have again assignment over here we are creating new node over here and assigning the head value to it which takes O one time complexity but here we have a loop and we know that when we loop a through given collection it takes o n time complexity so the loop over here will take o n time complexity and print function and assignment over here inside this loop takes o one time complexity so if we combine all time complexities over here we are getting o n time complexity because we know that in time complexities we can eliminate non-dominant terms so o one time complexities are non-dominant term over here now you might be interested what is the space complexity for this the space complexity is o1 because in this case we are just creating one because in this case we are just creating one temporal node over here no additional memory is required for performing this operation over here so this is all for this lecture over here hopefully everything is clear for traversal of single linked list and in the next lecture let's look at how can we find an element inside single linked list All right. In this video, we will look at how to find a node in a given single linked list. We use traversal to search for a node in a given single linked list. The only difference here, as soon as we find the searched node, we terminate the loop and exit. In the worst case, we might travel from the first node until the last node to find a node inside single linked list. So the idea is, in the given single linked list, if we want to find a node of five, for example, over here, we start from node one. We start from node one and check the value if this is the value that we are looking for or not so here we see that we are looking for five he, here the value of first node is one then we go to the next node in the next node once again we are comparing the value of node with the value that we are looking for we see that it's not the value that we are looking for then one more time we are traversing from second node to third node here again we are checking the value if this is the value that we are looking for or not you see that we are looking for five and this is not the value that we are looking so one more time we need to traverse from this node over here to the next node when we reach the node in which the value is equals to the value that we are looking for then we are terminating our loop over here another case might be that if we want to search for a value that does not exist in our list the loop will traverse all nodes and return saying that such value does not exist and this is very time consuming operation so the algorithm of searching for a node in a linked list is similar to the traversal but here in each loop we have if condition to compare the value that we are looking for as you see our algorithm starts with a parameter it takes node value that we are looking for then in the first step it's checking the head if the head exists it means that this single linked list exists if the head is null it means that we need to terminate it because the single linked list does not exist so after checking head if the head exists we continue to the if condition inside loop as you see inside loop over here we are checking that if the value that we are looking for if yes we are terminating if no so the loop is continuing over and over again until we find it if we don't find it it says that the value does not exist in this list so let's take this algorithm over here and implement it in practice using python programming language so let's switch to visual studio code there we will create a method based on this algorithm over here for searching a node in single linked list here so inside the class that we created in our previous lecture we will create a new function which is called search inside single linked list so as you see we had our insert function over here and traversal function over here so here i will create a new function which is called search in single linked list so dev search sll so this will take as a parameter self as always and node value that we are looking for so here 
According to our algorithm, we need to check head value. If self dot head is none, we will return saying that return the list does not exist. Else, we will create a node over here which takes the value of head and then inside while loop we will start to loop from head to the end and check for the value that we are looking for. So node is not none. Then if node value equals the value that we are looking for, node value from parameter then we will return value of node not dot value otherwise we are traversing to the next node which will be like this we are assigning node with the next value of node not next as you see while loop is same as the while loop which is in traversal then at the end we return saying that the value does not exist in this list which means that inside this loop if it cannot find the value it will return this this message from here now let's run our code to see how this is working so here i kept the code that we created before so in this code we are creating a single linked list and inserting values to it so over here i will call our function inside print statement To print the value of this node over here as you see we are inserting three over here so which means that searching for three should return the value of three so if i run our code you see that first it's printing out our single linked list over here we see that inside single linked list we have three over here so it's returning the value of three for example if i run our code for 33 you'll see that it will return this message over here so this time it returns that the value does not exist in this list. As you see, the search function that we created for searching in a single linked list is working very well. So it's searching the single linked list for a given node. So you might be interested what is the time and space complexity for this search method over here. So one more time, we will start from the first line. So here you see that in if condition, we are checking if the head exists or not. We know that this is constant time operation, so it will take O1 time complexity. And returning a text is also a constant time operation and this will take a one time complexity then we are continuing to the else condition inside else condition we are creating a node here and assigning a head value to it this is also takes a one time complexity then we are coming here we know that looping through any given collection takes o n time complexity so the time complexity of loop over here is o n time complexity and if condition inside this loop is O1 time complexity and returning and assigning value also is O1 time complexity. At the end, the return of this message, which says that the value does not exist in the list, also takes O1 time complexity. So if we combine all these time complexities over here, we can eliminate non-dominant terms. So non-dominant term in this case also O1 time complexity. So the time complexity for searching a value in a single linked list is O n time complexity. Now you might be interested what is space complexity and space complexity is O1 because here we are just creating a node inside this else condition over here. So that's why it takes O1 time complexity. Now in this video we have learned how to search in a given single linked list for a given value and we have learned that we are doing so by traversing through given single linked list. Now in the next lecture let's see deletion of a node from a single linked list. See you there. Alright, in the last lecture we have talked about how to search for a given value in a single linked list and hopefully you understand everything very well. Now in this lecture we will learn how to delete a node from a given single linked list. In one of previous lectures, we have learned how to insert a node to the single linked list. If you remember, we had three cases there, which are insert a new node at the beginning of single linked list, insert a new node at the end of single linked list, and insert a new node at the given location. Similarly, while deleting a node from single linked list, we have same conditions over here. So we can delete a node from the beginning of single linked list, 
and we can delete a node from any given location in the single linked list and we can delete a node at the end of single linked list let's see the first case which is deleting first node in single linked list here the first thing that we are going to do is to check whether the first node is the only node in the list or not if it is the only node in the list deleting it is very simple so let's look at this case so in this case we have only one node in our single linked list so we need to delete this node from here this is very simple we just need to update tail and head references over here to null so by updating these references to null it breaks the connection between head and to this node and tail to this node so after the link between this first node and head and tail is broken so the garbage collector in the memory will automatically delete the node over here so with this our deletion of a node from single link at least is finished so let's look at the second case where there are more than one nodes in single linked list and we want to delete the first node over here it's clear that in this case we just need to update the only head reference because here we don't touch the last node over here which means that the tail reference stays same so in our case for this single linked list we had to change the reference of head from 001 to 111 which is the physical location of second node over here by doing this we are breaking the connection between head and this first node and we are creating the connection between head and second node so if you update the head reference to 111 it creates the connection between head and second node and it breaks the connection between head to first node and first node to second node then when we delete the links to the first node and from the first node the garbage collector again will come and destroy this over here so our first node now is deleted now let's continue to the next case in which we are deleting a node from any given location so here we rely on loop and by using loop we need to find a node which is before the node that we want to delete let's say we want to delete node 3 in our case node 3 is with the value of 4 so we want to delete this node over here and we have to traverse from first node to the second and stop over here then here we need to update the reference of second node to the fourth node which is 5 over here so by doing this we are breaking the connection between second node and third node and third node and fourth node so let's see how this is working the first thing we are doing here we are traversing from first node to here then we are updating the reference of second node to the physical location of fourth node over here which is 333 you see that the reference is changed by doing this the connection between second and third node is broken and the connection between third node and fourth node is broken and we know that when the links to the given node are broken the garbage collector automatically deletes this node over here so with this deletion of a node in a given location is completed now let's continue to the next case in which we are deleting the last node in single linked list here again we have two conditions so the first condition is we have only one node in our single linked list this will be the same that we deleted in the first case of first node so here again we need to update the head and reference of tail to null and this will delete the connection between head and first node and the head with the first node so if we set these references to null as you see the connection is broken so when we don't have any connection to the given node the garbage collector will destroy this node from the memory and the second case is deleting the last node from linked list where there are more than one nodes in single linked list so let's imagine that this is our single linked list and we want to delete node 4 over here which is with the value of 5 this is the last node in our case the logic here is the same we need to update the reference of node which is before the last node to the null then reference the tail to this node over here because we know that the last node always takes null reference in single linked list but the question is how do you find the node before the last node so the answer is very simple we have to run a loop until we reach this node over here so when we find the node before the last node we need to update the reference of this node to null so it works like this we are traversing from first node to the second and from second node to the node that is in our case this is the node which comes before the last node so when we reach this node 
we need to update the reference of this node to now. And by updating this, the connection between this node over here with the last node is broken. Then, then the next thing that we are going to do, we need to update the tail reference to reference to this node. So as you see, when we update tail reference to 222, which is physical location of the node over here, it breaks the connection between tail and the last node. So when we don't have any link to the, this given node over here, the garbage collector destroys it from the memory. So with this, deleting last node from the given single linked list is complete. Now let's see how these three cases work in algorithm. We'll combine all these three cases in one algorithm. So let's see our algorithm. So our algorithm looks like this. Based on this algorithm, we will create method in Python. This makes our life very easier. So the algorithm starts from here. It takes as a parameter as a location in which location that we are going to delete a node. So the first thing that we are going to do in our method is to check head. If the head exists or not. It means that if we have head, it means we have a single linked list. If we don't have head, it means that the single linked list does not exist. So we are terminating our algorithm over here. Otherwise, if we have head, which means that our head is not known, so we are continuing over here. The first condition over here is to check if you want to delete first node. So if you want to delete first node, you know that we have two cases over here. If single linked list is consists of only one node or if single linked list is consists of more than one node. If it consists of only one node, then we are updating head and tail to null. And with this, and the connection between head and first node, and the connection between tail and first node is broken. So the garbage collector deletes the node and we are terminating our algorithm. In the second case, we have more than one nodes in the single linked list. We are just updating the head reference to the second node. And we know that first node's reference is the second node. So we set head is equal to first node's next. So by this, the connection between head and first node is broken and garbage collector deletes the first node from the memory. Then we are continuing to the next block over here in which we are checking the if we want to delete last node from the linked list. Here again we have two cases. The first case is if we have only one node in our single linked list. In this case it's same operation over here so I'm not going to repeat it. But the second case is if we have more than one node in our single linked list. In this case we need to loop through our single linked list until we reach the node that is before the last node. Then we set this node's next reference to null and we need to set tail to reference to this node. So by this, we are breaking the connection between the, the node which is before the last node and last node and between tail and last node. Then the last node gets deleted. Then the third case is we need to delete a node from any given location. In this case, one more time, we are looping through the single linked list to find the node that we want to delete. Then when we find the location in single linked list, we are just setting the current node's next value to the next node's next value. We know that the next node's next value is the node after the next node. So by changing the reference, we are deleting the connection between current node and next node. So the next node in this case will be deleted. So this is all for this lecture. In this lecture, we have looked at three different cases of deletion of a node from the single linked list. Now in the next lecture, Let's take this algorithm from here and implement it using Python programming language. Hi there. In this lecture, we'll create a method based on the algorithm that we learned in our previous lecture. So here we'll create delete node method. So let's get started. So one more time inside our single linked list class, I'll create a new method that's called delete node. So here I will declare a method delete node which will take self as a parameter and location as a parameter. So according to our algorithm, the first thing that we are going to do over here is to check if head is exist or not. If self dot head is known, it means that the single linked list does not exist. So I'll print out over here saying that the single linked list, the singly linked list does not exist. Else, we will continue to check our conditions. 
So the first condition in our algorithm was to check location parameter. As we did in our insertion method, I will do the same over here, which means that if the location is zero, we want to delete a node from the beginning of single linked list. If the location is one, we want to delete last node in the single linked list. And in else condition, we will check the location parameter in which location that we want to delete a node from single linked list. So the first thing that I'm going to check here is to check if location parameter is equals to zero, which means that we want to delete first node from single linked list. So in this case, as you remember, we have two cases over there to check if we have only one node in the single linked list or the number of nodes is more than one in single linked list. So to do so, we can write case like this. If head and tail reference to the same node, then it means that we have only one node in our single linked list. So I will write if condition like this. If self dot head equals to self dot tail, this means that both of them are referencing to the same node. So we have only one node in our single linked list. Then in this case, according to our algorithm, I'm setting the head to none and tail to none. So by doing this, we are deleting the node from the beginning of single linked list in which we have only one node in our list. Then we are continuing to the else condition in which we have more than one node in our single linked list. In this case, we need to change the head reference to the second node. So how can we change it? So we'll set self head to the second node. So how can we access the second node? We can access second node like this, head dot next. We know that head stores the physical location of first node. So if we access the, so if we access the first node's next reference, this is the second node in our single linked list. So we are by setting this head to the second node, we are deleting the first node in our single linked list in which we have more than one node. So with this if condition over here, our first condition is completed. So the next condition is we need to check again location parameter. If location parameter equals one, in this case, we are deleting the last node from the single linked list. So as we said before, if we have only one node in our single linked list, this means that this operation is same as over here. So I'll copy code from here and put it over here. So it is the same operation. We are just updating the head and tail references in our single linked list. Now the else condition will be different. In else condition, we need to traverse through the single linked list until we find the node before the last node. Then we are updating these nodes next reference to null and change the tail reference to this node. So here I will create a temporal node which will take head value. Then we will start to loop from first node while it is not none. We are traversing through the list. Then we need to stop when we reach the node which is before the last node. So how can we do this? If we put if condition like this node dot next. So if the node's next reference equals to the last node, it means that we are in the node which is before the last node. So here I will put if condition like this equals to self tail. And we know that tail stores the physical location of last node. So in this case, we need to break from the loop. And in every loop, we need to just set this temporal node, the next node. Then when we reach the node before the last node, we are just setting the next reference of this node to none and changing tail to reference to this node. So by doing this, we are deleting the last node in a single linked list in which we have more than one node. Now, the third case is we are deleting a node from any given location. In this case, I will write else condition like this. So one more time, I need to create temporal node, which will store the value of first node. Then here, I will create another variable, which is index. This is helpful for using inside loop. So while index less than location, minus one, we are putting minus one over here because we need to traverse till the node, which is before the node that we want to delete. 
So here I'm putting location minus one. So in each case, one more time, I will set temporal node to the next node dot next and index should be increased one in each iteration index plus one so outside loop we need to find next node so we know that next node is the current nodes next reference so next current node is temporary node which will be the next like this then we need to set current nodes reference to the node that is after the next node. So by doing this, we are deleting the connection between current node and the next node. So in this case, we, we know that our current node is temporary node. So the next reference should be the next node's next reference. So ne next node's the next reference is the node after the next node. So it's just complicated, but if you carefully ex examine this code over here, you will understand it. If you don't understand it, I recommend you to go to the back of our previous lectures in which we are explaining three cases of deletion of a node from single linked list. So with this, we complete our method over here. Now let's see how this is working in our single linked list. So as before, I haven't deleted the code from here in which we are creating single linked list and inserting values to it. Here, after inserting values, we are printing the single linked list. Then I will call this delete node over here. For the first case, let's put zero in which we will delete first node. Then we will check other cases as well. Now let's run our code. You see that this is the our single linked list. Then after deletion, it becomes like this. You see that zero is missing, which means that we delete the first node from here. Now let's change the parameter from here to one in which we are deleting the last node. So run our code. You see that the last node was four now it's deleted so in our case now the last node is zero so let's change the location for example three which will delete the middle node from the single linked list and run our code you see that by putting three over here we are deleting a node which is after three so this is our first node second node three and three get deleted from here so the node after the location that we provided it gets deleted and with this we, we complete our method so we checked three cases so we don't have any problem in our single linked list. So you might be interested, what is the time and space complexity for this method over here? So let's start from the beginning. Uh, so here we have talked about a lot. So we know that the if condition over here is all one time complex because here we are just checking the head value and printing out some text over here. Then we are continuing in the else condition. In the else condition, we have first if condition over here which takes all one time complexity because here again, we are just changing the references and updating some values. So this is all one time complexity. So if we continue to the below, here we have again another if condition. This part of if condition is all one time complexity. But when we come to else part of this if condition, we see that we have loop over here, which means that if we are looping through any given collection, the time complexity is O n. So this part over here will take O n time complexity. Then we are doing some assignments over here and we know that assigning a, any given value is O one time complexity. So these parts over here O one time complexity. Then the last else condition over here is O n time complexity because inside this else condition we see we have loop over here. So if you are looping through linked list, it means that it takes O n time complexity. So we know that if we have so we know that if we have any code block inside our, inside our method in which the time complexity is O n, the whole method's time complexity will be O n because of elimination of non-dominant terms. So the time complexity for deleting a node from the single linked list is O n. So you might be interested what is the space complexity for this operation over here? The space complexity is O1 because here we are just using some temporary variables inside these loops. For performing this operation, an additional memory is not required. That's why the space complexity is O1. That's all for deletion of a node from single linked list. So in this lecture, we have learned how to delete a node from single linked list. And in method, we have developed three different cases and we have learned what is the time and space complexity for this method over here. Hopefully you understand everything. 
and you got the deep knowledge about the logic behind it now in the next lecture let's see how can we delete entire single linked list hi there so in previous video we looked at how to delete a node from single linked list now here we will look at how to delete an entire single linked list let's imagine that this is our single linked list over here and we want to delete entire single linked list the process is very simple all we have to do is we have to disconnect head and tail references from the first and last nodes or from the single linked list if we manage to delete these references this means that we are able to delete the entire list the reason for this if first node is not referenced by head then it will automatically becomes eligible for garbage collection so the garbage collector deletes the first node then it continues to the next node one more time here if this node is not referenced any given node the garbage collector will delete this node over here so it will continue until the last node here it will not delete the last node because last node is referenced by tail so we need to break this connection over here also so let's set our head value to null and see what's happening so if we set this value to null we see that the connection between head and first node is broken so the garbage collector will destroy this node over here so after destroying this we see that we don't have any connection to the second node over here so this eligible for garbage collection so it will destroy this node over here as well then it continues to the next node and next node will be destroyed by garbage collector as well but when it reaches the last node it's not deleting this one because here the last node is referenced by tail so we need to set tail reference to null this breaks the connection between tail and last node which means that the garbage collector will delete this node over here as well so the last node is get deleted so as you see by setting head to null and tail to null we are deleting entire single link list now let's see how this is working in practice let's switch to visual studio code and write our delete entire single link list method over there so here inside single linked list class that we created before we will create new method which is called delete entire single linked list so i'll declare method like this delete entire single linked list and this will take as a parameter self then here one more time we need to check if the list exists or not so self dot head is none then we print out saying that the single link of this does not exist then in else condition we will set our we will set head value to none and tail value to none with this we are deleting the reference between first node and head and the last node and tail so this is our function so let's see how this is working in the real life example so one more time i haven't deleted the code that we created before in which we are creating single linked list and inserting elements to it so here i will run this method for this single linked list over here but before running i'm just printing out the values of single linked list then after running i'm doing the same operation over here so let's save it and run our code you see that this was the initial version of our single linked list and after running this method our single linked list does not exist so we deleted the entire single linked list so you might be interested what is the time and space complexity for this operation over here the time complexity for this method over here is all one because here in the first condition we are just checking the head value and printing out some text this is all one time complexity and in the else condition we are just setting head and tail to none and this is also all one time complexity which means that deleting an entire single linked list is all one time complexity and you might be interested what is the space complexity the space complexity is all one because here we don't need any space to perform this operation so the space complexity is all one so that's all for this video in this lecture we have learned how to delete entire single linked list and what is the time and space complexity 
for this operation over here. Now in the next lecture, let's look at what is the time and space complexity for all operations of single linked list. See you over there. Hi there. In this video, we will recap the time and space complexity of all operations that we have learned till now on a single linked list. The first operation is creation of single linked list. Here, the time and space complexity is constant operation. The reason for this, we have to create a head and tail and first node which take constant time. And similarly, the space complexity for this. And similarly, for space complexity, we have to create only one node and two reference variables. So this is also a constant space complexity operation. Now the next operation over here is insertion. And we have learned that the time complexity for this operation in the worst case is ON. The reason for this is that if we want to insert a new node in the middle of single linked list, we have to traverse starting from the beginning till we reach the location that we want to insert the new node. So in the worst case, this might take ON time complexity. But the space complexity for insertion is O1 because we just need to create one node. So the next operation over here is searching. This is a searching for a value in a given list. Here again, we need to traverse to find a given node. We might traverse till the end of the single linked list nodes, which takes O n time complexity. Here again, the space complexity is O1 because we only use a variable inside loop, which takes constant time operation. The next operation over here is traversing and it's obvious that it takes O n time complexity because we have to loop through all elements of single linked list which is O n time complexity. Space complexity again here is O1 because we use temp variables only inside loop. Then the next operation is deleting a node from a single linked list. The time complexity for this is O n because we need to traverse through the list to find the node for deletion. In the worst case, we might traverse all elements, so this will take O n time complexity. And space complexity over here, once again, is O one time complexity because we use temporary variable only inside loop over here. So finally, deletion of linked list takes constant time operation because we just need to delete references from head and tail, and the rest elements will be deleted automatically by garbage collector. The space complexity over here is O1 because we might use only temporary variables. Uh, so with this, we are concluding our single linked list. So that's all for this video. And in the next lecture, we will learn another type of linked list, which is circular single linked list. So with this lecture, we have completed first type of linked list, which is single linked list. And thanks for your time and see you in the next video.